Yo, what's up guys? It's x rays and welcome to a new episode of Gaming Nightmares. Now in the last episode, in case you guys missed it, we covered Pokemon Curse Black. If you guys want to check that one out, a link to that will be down in the description below, as well as an annotation on screen to the entire Gaming Nightmares playlist. As always, if you do go on to enjoy the video guys, make sure to slap like and a favorite on the video. Get some content out there, helps my channel grow, share the video around. And of course, if you are new and you enjoy gaming creepy pastas and creepy stories in general, then make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss any content in the future. As for today guys, we're going to be talking about someone who posted on a forum looking for an old game. And eventually leads to him finding out which game it was and leads to a pretty creepy encounter. Now really quickly before I jump into the story guys, on my shirt shop, ogxrays.spreadshirt.com, the official Gaming Nightmares shirt, you guys can get it for 15% off all the way up until Tuesday, so today, tomorrow, and the day after, 15% off when you use the code HEART15. Enough of that, let's jump straight into it guys. So basically this person, uh, who's much older already, he's recalling a game that he played with his father a long time ago. Uh, a game where he said there was like different holes that he had to jump over, there were snakes that you had to attack, spider webs that you would bounce off of, and basically he was, uh, you know, on this forum posting this, trying to get some idea from other people to help him find out what this game was, and it was a game for the Super Nintendo, and it had the words mine on it, so, you know, everyone was kind of helping him figure out what it is. So as he's talking about this game, he's recalling, you know, that he used to play with his father, him and him and his father would sit down, they used to play this game, they used to take turns, you know, whenever someone would die, they would hand the controller to the other person and just kind of, you know, go back and forth while playing this game, and it was very fond memories for Matt. So anyways, Matt decides that he wants to find this game again, more importantly because uh, as of recent years, his parents were having troubles, you know, and they ended up divorcing, they ended up separating, and it kind of was a big hit to him. Uh, but also, he started noticing that his dad was acting strange, he would be more, a little more secluded, he would be a little bit more short-tempered. And eventually, it led to him not seeing his father at all. His dad just kind of disappeared, left off, and he didn't see him for a couple of years. And it was at this point, like a storage area, they were sending him mail and telling him that, you know, his dad hadn't paid for his, you know, his spot. If he didn't show up within the next couple of weeks, that they would end up, you know, just auctioning off everything that was inside of his storage unit. So, you know, a as this is going on, you know, he hasn't seen his dad for a couple of years. And then eventually he finds out what the game is and he decides, well, he knows what the game is already. He decides to download the game and download an emulator in hopes of playing this game. So he goes online, he downloads the game, he starts playing it, goes through it, you know, the way that you normally do, passing it all the way up to the end. And the game actually ends up crashing and he gets really upset. You know, he's basically at the end of the game. And whenever the game actually crashes, you know, even when you're playing it on the Super Nintendo, uh, everything would reset, you would have to start all over, which really, really sucked, but he was really upset, he was like all the way at the end. It crashes, and then it starts getting a little bit weird. So usually when it starts up, you see the, the whole cutscene that you get where, you know, you obviously have the little boy with, uh, inside this Mayan temple, he sees this, and then his dad gets snatched up from behind the shadows, you know, in-game, it's, it's a cutscene, which then kind of leads to the actual intro, the, the actual start screen, which then leads you to the start of the game. But this time around, when he's watching this, it actually turns out that as he's watching this cutscene, the dad, instead of him being snatched, it looks more like the dad is being stabbed. So, you know, there's a lot of, you know, red going everywhere, red streaks. At the time, he didn't realize it because, you know, it wasn't really something that you would see before. Uh, but it actually ends up being blood, and he's just kind of looking at it. And instead of really being scared, he's kind of a little bit kind of taken aback, a little amazed at it. You know, he thought that it was just uh, some hack, obviously, that someone uploaded to you know, the, the ROM websites or whatever. And he decides, you know, instead of really being scared of it, he thought he was, you know, maybe it's gonna have a different story, maybe this place was gonna be a little bit different. So he was, more than scared, he was kind of excited. So after it crashes, he actually, he's mad, he's upset. And then he realizes that some kind of weird text box opens up and it says, hey buddy, and he gets a little bit scared. And he realizes that, hey buddy, is what his dad used to tell him, you know, it's what he would call him all the time, like, hey buddy. And then another text box pops up and it says, your turn is up which is, again, something that his dad and him would say to each other as they were playing through this game before. You know, if one of them died, they would say, your turn is up, my turn, and then they would take over. So then the game restarts again by itself, and it goes through the entire motion of the cutscene right at the beginning. 
So as he's kind of excited, you know, maybe this is going to have a different story, maybe it's a different, you know, hacked version of the game. At the same time, he's kind of like, oh, hopefully this isn't a virus or something that's affecting my computer, you know, because it's happened before to him. So then the screen cuts to black, and it ends up going right to the very beginning of the game, you know, everything's the same, everything feels the same, you know, usually... You know, when, when it's a mod or something, you expect something different, but honestly, it's, it's the very same level, it's the very same thing, nothing out of place. But the only thing that he kind of realized as he was playing through is that his character, instead of it being the little boy, the sprite, it looked exactly like his dad. So it was a little bit strange to him, he was kind of like, is it my dad, is it not? You know, he wasn't really sure if maybe it was just the game again being modded, if someone was spying on him. He was, he was kind of freaking out at this point. So at this point, he's really, really scared. He's not sure what to do. You know, he's pressing the escape key. He's trying to close this program. Nothing's happening. He decides, screw this. I'm going to turn off the laptop, write manually, turn off the power. He tries to push the button. Nothing happens. Computer is still staying on. And the character on the screen just is silent the entire time. And there was no sound as he's just running through this level at this point, just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So at this point, his character actually starts running to the left of the screen, runs into a tree, and as soon as he bumps into it, he falls down. He's kind of out of it for a second. And he realizes, you know, he's really, really scared at this point because as this character keeps getting up, running into the trunk, he hears those very same slams on one of the doors in the hallway. So he's, he's scared at this point. You know, he looks out to see if there's anyone out there. There's no one out there. It's just kind of coincidental at this point. And he's very, very, you know, kind of shaken up at this point. And he's scared. He runs back to his laptop, but the character was gone. And so he just sat down, the game crashed again, and then it tried to relaunch itself, which gave him another phrase. Your turn, son. He clicked it, and then it read, you'll soon find out why. He was a bit confused at the time, but he decided that he didn't want to restart the game. He was done with all this weird crap, and he decides that he just wants to turn it off again. And again, it would not let him press escape or manually turn off the computer. Nothing was going on. So he figured that he would outsmart it. He decided to close the laptop. He unplugged it. He was hoping that the battery would die out soon by the next day or whatever. Then he would have it reformatted, obviously get rid of all the viruses, and hopefully go about his life like normal. But it wasn't that simple. Even though he had muted the sound of the game, he kept hearing this loud scream, this like pain, this loud scream of torment and torture. And the sound sounds exactly like his dad, like his dad's voice. He panics, he grabs the laptop, he throws it to the wall, but it just gets louder. He, he decides that at this point, he's just gonna have to open it up and try to play the game again. Again, it loads up the very first level and he immediately notices that the level is different. Everything was black and white and the only thing separating the black things in the background was the outlines traced in white. So at this point, he starts running to the left of the screen just the way that his, his character did before when it was bouncing into the tree. He decides to run to the left. He runs all the way to the left of the screen where he saw the trunk and it looks like there's a hole on the trunk, some weird red hole. And at this point, he thinks, well, maybe it's a portal that leads to some other part of the game. Again, it's probably a hack game. He's not really sure at this point. So he gets really scared and he decides, you know what, screw this. I'm going to run all the way to the left, go to that portal. At least it'll lead me somewhere else. As he's running to the left, you can hear this like weird demonic voice. Just kind of laughing in a very low pitch as he's running to the left. Eventually, he does get to that red portal. He makes it through and the game crashes again. At this point, he's kind of relieved. He's like, you know what, the game crashed. It's okay. I'm done. Nothing's going to happen at this point. And he decides to avoid clicking on any files, clicking on anything. He just tries to shut down the computer. And at this point, he's just kind of, he's, he's done with it. He's done with the whole thing. He doesn't care anymore. And he decides to just grab his laptop, put it under a bunch of bed sheets, putting it like this, put it in this closet that was just at the very back of the house. And he decides, that's it. I'm done with this. I'm going to go to sleep. Hopefully the battery runs out. And then tomorrow he'll, you know, auction it off, go to some pawn shop and just get rid of it. So then that very night as he's trying to sleep, he's having these really strange dreams. He's having really strange dreams and he can hear those screams again, the crying, the distorted laughter. And everything that he saw in the gameplay, he's seeing it in his head, only this time he's seeing it through the eyes of the character. And he can hear his father's voice as he's telling him, help me Matt, buddy, I need your help, find it. And then he's like freaked out. He's like, what am I supposed to find? What the hell's going on? After that, he actually ends up seeing his father in the game and his father is just like being violently purged of his skeletons with skeletons being pulled out of his body there are organs and blood everywhere and his father is just screaming and at the same time just laughing and he's not sure what's going on he doesn't know what he's supposed to find he doesn't know what he's supposed to do and he wakes up in a cold sweat 
wakes up at 3 a.m. He goes to the laptop, tries to plug it back in, and then he gets a message that says, Welcome back. He clicks on it. The box and says, Come find me. You're ready. At this point, instead of the program launching itself, he launches the program, goes into it, but this time it's, it's a lot weirder. It's a dad's character, but instead of there being any scenery, anything in the background, it was just pitch black. There was some quiet music playing that sounded like pipe organs, some low dark chanting or hymns of some sort. There was a lot of words that he couldn't quite make out. He's on his last life, and he went from one to zero, the game crashed for the last time, and when he checked it, it had deleted itself, completely from the computer. He was using a Windows audio recorder to record some of the sounds so that he could save it for later, but as it turns out, those guys were deleted or renamed or moved somewhere. He couldn't find them anymore. At this point, Matt leaves his final entry, January 14th, 2013 at 12.11 p.m. He says, I've calmed down a bit as I typed this last part myself, but that will only last until the next dream haunts me and calls for me to find him. But I realized today that I'm actually becoming my father in a way. As much as I don't want to accept it, I've been rapidly drawing away from my family and becoming more reclusive because of all this. As much as I want to stop looking and breaking the chain now, I can't. I already took a vacation from work and went to the storage container when my roommate got back. I didn't bother explaining to him. I knew he wouldn't believe me. As I found both the game and the Super Nintendo in the same box with nothing else in it, Everything on the cartridge stickered were blacked out except the character that looked just like my father. A lot of people say I'm a mirror image of him. I'm going to find out where exactly he is and buy tickets to Mexico to find him and those ruins. So that's it guys for this creepypasta. I thought it was a pretty interesting one that kind of covers a Super Nintendo game, you know, kind of being drawn into this. That forum where they had all these ROMs and this hacked ROM, apparently someone had uploaded it, he goes back in typical fashion. It's not there anymore, and the user who uploaded it didn't even exist. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Gaming Nightmares. If you enjoyed it, make sure to slap a like and a favor on the video. It does get the content out there. It helps my channel grow a ton. And of course, if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss any content. Also, really quickly, guys, I do want to mention once again that I am having that special sale on my apparel shop. Go check it out, ogxrace.spreadshirt.com. I got two versions of my Gaming Nightmare shirt, and if you use the code HEART15, you'll get 15% off. Lastly, guys, I do want to mention, I know that I like doing these every single week, or at least I try, but I've decided that I'm going to be doing Gaming Nightmares once every two weeks. The reason being that I want to be able to work on these a lot more. I want to be able to edit it and have a lot more atmospheric music with it. I really just overall want to make it a better series and a more entertaining product for you guys. So thank you so much for watching once again. As always, if you enjoyed it, like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. I'll make sure I'm out and keep having nightmares.